Hmm. So it sounds like so. It, it does sound like you know if if this person who is having a and a uh, schizophrenic but potentially non dual experience, which is truer than than anything that's going on in that hospital, is given certain drugs that it will affect them. So it, it does seem that we are uh, pulled between two levels of reality. One is this survival, human, two eyes, you know, ten fingers, life, and another is something more. Uh, is that? And it doesn't seem that there's an option perhaps until death to let go of the human survival part, or I guess that would quickly result in one's death. Yeah. I mean, if you want to keep surviving, you got to keep surviving. Mm -hmm. e even if you're enlightened, you still have to participate in survival if you care about surviving. And some people don't. And I mean, many, many mystics and so forth, they've just died. They've, I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's the thing is that when you really have no no self anymore, if you truly transcend the self fully, you you literally don't care if you physically die. This is something that has concerned me for a while because you know I, I understand people uh, talk about non attachment and I, it's uh, perhaps a perfect ideal, but the perfect teacher dies very quickly. <laughs> they don't make it very long. So right. what we're left with are it seems like imperfect teachers who still have an attachment of some sort, right. whether it's a preference for life or they just like food or whatever, they they haven't gone the whole way. And so it's not a very uh, it's not very memeable this this <laughs> let yourself go and die because it just snuffs itself out as soon as it's discovered exactly every time. Yeah, it's, 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 it's perfectly tautological. So in other yeah. words, if and I mean, this this is much more profound than even you realize yet. But the only reason you are alive here in this form is because you're afraid of going into a different form. So oh, the, I'm, the, yeah, yeah. the only thing that keeps you literally here on this planet is your fear. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have fear, you wouldn't be here anymore <laughs> and you wouldn't be going through all the suffering. So you're, you're literally creating this dream. You're in a dream. You've constructed this dream because you're afraid to go to a higher dream. Sure. And so that fear is, the linchpin that holds absolutely everything together, your, your fear of death. And so, uh, so of course you're going to, every, everything in your psyche, everything you've been taught, all of your instincts, all of your desires, all of that is going to turn you against completely deconstructing your sense of self and reality, because if you did so, you would cease to be here. <laughs> so it, it, it all perfectly, it all perfectly matches together. So for you personally, do you see yourself one day starving to death? I mean, what is what is your and I mean this uh, not not flippantly like is it goals goals, I suppose, are, are counter to what we're even speaking of, because the idea of a goal pres presumes a preferred outcome. Uh, what what is as you ascend or become more enlightened, does that necessarily, if successful, result in your complete lack of attachment and then subsequent death? Yeah, in practice, it's a lot. It's a lot trickier. Um, I still have many attachments and uh, uh, and fears, which which keep me here. And um, honestly, it's a struggle. I don't. I don't know where I'm going to end up. Mm -hmm. um, I mean. Honestly, if I, if I if I like went balls to the wall with it. Um, all the way, then what would happen is that <laughs> just the entire material universe would just cease to exist. And yeah. the entire world and everybody with it, including myself, would just cease to exist. And I would just rest as an infinite singularity forever. Um, that would be the ultimate state. <laughs> um, you, you basically be, so what happens is that you become more and more conscious. You become more and more conscious of your attachments and why you're attached to this thing, why you need sex, why you need food, why you need money, all this sorts of stuff. And then you become more and more conscious and then slowly you, you lose you lose interest in these material things because you've experienced them enough to the point where it's like, yeah, okay, I know how it works. It's cool and everything, but like, I want something deeper. Is there anything deeper I can get? And then you realize, oh, there's a little bit deeper and you go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. And what you realize that is at some point you realize that what you're really after is you're after consciousness. You're not after anything else. The money, the sex, the business, the, all the success and all this sorts of stuff, these were all substitutions for inferior substitutions, limited substitutions for what you really want, which is pure, absolute, unadulterated consciousness and love. And so 
you start to move towards that and you relinquish more and more of yourself. But as you're doing that, it, it, it burns your ego. <laughs> it burns your sense of self away and it feels very painful and you don't know how far, how deep you want to go. Most of us have sort of a limit to how, how far we're willing to go. Um, Does but, free will f figure into this? I, I saw an early video of yours mm -hmm. that was uh, a determinist worldview that I, I think I understand pretty well and subscribe to. to you know, one of one of my common experiences on psychedelics is just like this is I don't want to say ha happening to you is is doesn't do it justice because that implies a separateness. But in my day to day life, the ego likes to think that I can make choices and do things better or worse. And then when I get into these, it's like. This is the ride. <laughs> you are you are strapped, and so stop beating yourself up for not being where you couldn't possibly right. be. Um, it, so, do, do you have? Do you come back around to free will at any point? Yeah, you... yeah. It's it's my my views on free will have have evolved uh, quite a bit because that video you referenced is like five five years old or six years old, um, and since then I've had some huge epiphanies about how will works. So um, it's it's very twisted and fascinating. Uh, so basically, it's it's sort of relativistic. We, if you're in the human state of consciousness that that you and I are sort of in right now, sort of ordinary, conventional, dual consciousness, um, like separate selves, then you could say we do have free will, because our notion of free will is sort of a relativistic thing. Like what we really mean by free will is that, like, yeah, I could I could choose to go to the gym today or not go to the gym, eat that donut or not eat that donut. And in a certain pragmatic sense, we have that option. We have that choice. Um, but when you become really, really conscious, what you realize is that the entire universe, everything that's happening here is absolute truth. Absolute truth is absolutely true under all circumstances. It can't be anything other than what it is. It's a perfect tautology. And therefore, this is sort of the, the twisted uh, paradox of it is that when you reach God consciousness, you realize that God is love and it cannot be anything other than love. And therefore, everything that's occurring and has ever occurred has always been absolute love and that it's happening for the purpose of love and that it cannot literally be anything else. And that God himself, even though we could say God has infinite will by willing all of this into existence, God itself doesn't really have free will in the sense that all of God's will is going 100% into the generation of absolute love. Therefore, God cannot be anything other than absolute love, and it couldn't be anything less than that. Therefore, even God itself doesn't really have free will because it gave all of its free will towards infinite love. Mm. So, so this is a good place to come back to the question that I would flagged earlier. I remain open to all of that, but how do you know that right now? So what is right. what is as as something other than a belief or a memory? Because that's what I remain, uh, I suppose, skeptical or curious about is even, when I look in my own index of uh, psychedelic experiences, they, they do exist as memories. Now, certainly some of it has been integrated um, and has become the uh, you know part and parcel of how I experience life. But so for that, is that something that you feel like you're experiencing or is that – or are those – words that you are repeating well it's a little trickier than that um well first of all i would ask you how do you know anything <laughs> people people love to mm -hmm. people love to question how do you leo how do you know this how do you know that well how do you know anything like really when you start to deeply question what you realize is that you don't really know anything and anything you think you know including when you're sitting there doubting stuff um that's also that's not something you know. That's just something you believe. Sure, sure. Um, no, I and I. My my answer to that would be, I'm using language in a manipulative, uh, often espousing beliefs without tapping into the true experience. I have, I do have, when I tap into it, a direct experience of something, but right. as I tap into it, I am unaware of God or love or, or the, right. the absolute truth. Well, when here, I when what, I hit that, ex here's my my pay dirt is not that yet. Or maybe, here's what will help either. you is that actually the answer to how do you know it, anything is actually very simple and clear because um, there's only one way to know something is to be conscious of it. Mm -hmm. You only like how do you know you exist? Yes, it would be you know like Descartes said I think, but I think a better formulation is I. I am, therefore I am. You know, I am right, conscious. Right now, right now, you're conscious that you exist. Mm -hmm. 
So that's how you know. But see, if I wanted to t sort of adopt your position, I could say, well, well, maybe, but maybe you don't exist. Because I mean, consciousness, what is this? I mean, maybe you're just, maybe it's just a belief or something. Well, this but is see, my question. No, you're are conscious you conscious of it. You're are conscious, you conscious of, it. of Well, this is my question. Are you conscious of God as love as we're speaking? It's a little tricky to answer that because there's different, there's a lot of different ways in which one could be conscious of it. So there could be much higher states of consciousness that I could be in where I could just be literally enraptured in ecstasy, like squirming on the floor. Like I, I've, I've literally experienced infinite love to such a degree that just like you would be plastered on the floor in ag like writhing in, in sexual ecstasy like that much love. so obviously I, i'm not experiencing that right now yeah <laughs> but um makes for an easier conversation <laughs> but yeah i mean yeah you can't have a conversation you can't even walk in, in you can hardly walk in that um state so the state i'm in now is much lower but i've had enough of these states to the point where i re like i can tune in right now and just realize that yeah this whole room is god and See, love is a love is a much more profound thing than than an emotion. People, people, people misunderstand love. Um, it, it sounds very sort of hippy dippy and and new agey to say that everything is love because people again, the part of the materialistic paradigm is that it assumes that love is a human emotion or feeling that living beings have, and only like the higher living beings. Like you probably don't think that a an ant has much love, but like a, maybe a mammal has some love. But a human has more um, capacity to love. But that's this is just a little tip of the iceberg of what love really is. Love is actually a metaphysical thing. Love is 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 a feature or the essence of consciousness itself. So if you if you get rid of the idea that there is anything beyond consciousness, and I mean just notice this, you've never experienced anything beyond consciousness. So you have no scientific reason to believe there's anything beyond consciousness because consciousness is all you've ever experienced. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, I, even in theory, there's no way that you could experience something outside of consciousness because if you were to experience it, it would be conscious for mm -hmm. you. And therefore, it's inside of consciousness. So when you realize this very deeply, you realize consciousness is infinite. Therefore, there cannot be anything outside of consciousness. Sometimes people say, oh, Leo, but what if you're wrong? And what if there actually is something beyond consciousness? How would you know? Well, when you experience infinite consciousness, the key realization there is that it's infinite. Infinite means <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing that could be outside of it because infinite has no outside because it goes on forever, literally. Mm -hmm. So if there's nothing outside of consciousness, this is all there is, and um, and you have direct access to it. There's not a veil of perception. So this is another assumption of the materialistic paradigm of science is that, well, there's an objective world out there, and then there's the world of sensations or perceptions in here, and what I'm seeing is just a veil. It's not the real thing. The real thing is behind the scenes. We can't access that. Well, that's true in that paradigm. But if consider that there are no objective things behind the scenes. There is no veil then. There's only perception. Perception is reality. Appearance is reality. Appearance is absolute truth. Mm -hmm. So I guess I suppose a question here. Um, is it, it oh, 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 oh. very important? Sure. And how do I know that? Sure. Because the same way you know that you're alive, you're mm -hmm. conscious, you're conscious of it. There is. So here's the thing is that people are trying to get to some sort of knowledge or truth through an objective, non-conscious material method. And that itself is the delusion because that is happening within consciousness. So what you have to, you have to bite the bullet of consciousness and to realize that your consciousness is not just some secondary thing that could be wrong. Your consciousness is the only thing that there is and it's absolutely true. So if you're doubting your own consciousness, you're completely fucked. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description. We'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.